Great. Hey guys, good morning. It's really great to see all the people early in the morning. Honestly, I thought probably there were not a lot of people, but it's good to see almost 100 people are here. And uh, that gives me a lot of, you know, like energy to share the content today and share the uh, knowledge with you guys today. So, you know, um, Lauren was mentioning something about viral content, right? Few contents we create on the social media that goes viral and few content that we create probably that is not going viral. But for sure, I'm not gonna talk about how to create viral content because do you guys remember that um, in last year, one of the guy was um, sleeping and doing the live and he got 3 million views. Can you guys remember? Someone was just sleeping and did a live and that got 3 million of views. If you can remember, please type two. Who can remember it from last year? Okay, those who are not aware of it, I'm just telling you, a guy was literally sleeping and doing the live and he got 3 million views and that content got viral. So, you know, like if you go viral for a wrong reason, that's not a great idea because the guy who hit that I and mean, created that content, the first video was 3 million, but the next video was not even 20,000. So, you know, when you are a content creator, it is really important to understand what kind of content I should create that can add value and that can be consistently successful. Our idea shouldn't be to make one 3 million views content and another one is 5,000 views content. So to me, that's the part where what we're going to discuss, how we can create a content in social media that probably engage in the most of the times and what type of content we're going to create. Okay, let me go to the next slide. So today's agenda in, in, a, very not, not, in, a, in a very nutshell, we're going to have an introduction about content, content marketing. We're going to see some examples and by seeing those examples, we will try to figure it out how we can create any content. Doesn't matter, it's a video content, it's a podcast, it's a infographic, uh, it's for TikTok, it's for Instagram, whatever thing you name, whatever content you're going to create. I think if we follow these four steps, these four steps can help you to create a great content, regardless of your platform, regardless of the type of content you're creating. And not only that, uh, you know, like I also find a rules called 4E, uh, that rules actually really effective when we create the content of social media. And that's what I'd like to share with you guys as well. So I think uh, Lauren has given a very nice introduction of myself, so I'm not going through it. So, okay, the first thing I'd like to ask today, you know, like this question, uh, First, first of all, I want to tell you, I'm not here to teach you guys anything because when you are 18 plus, it is very difficult to teach people something. So I'm not here to teach you guys anything. Rather than I would like to give you guys some information, some thoughts that probably you can, you know, like ask yourself and you can work on it and you can make yourself better. And the idea is uh, I'd like to give you that thought, different perspectives so you can implement in your business or in your um, professional life as well. So the first thing I'd like to ask you guys, what do you, you know, like what comes in, what comes in your mind when we said content or content marketing? Because, you know, I had a very wrong perception for a long period of time. So that's why this is the first question I'd like to ask everyone. When I said content, what comes in your mind? Or why people actually consume content? Or why we create content? Lauren said engagement, information, what people wish to know. Anyone wants to try? I'm looking for something very specific. Attract people. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now let me tell. Uh, and then you guys probably justify it. Am I correct? So I feel we create content to solve a problem. Someone said key message. This is absolutely right. Uh, engage with your customer. So I said we create content or we consume content to solve a problem. Do you agree with it? If you agree, type three. If you don't agree, uh, you can let me know your thought. Okay, now I'm gonna explain why I think we are consume content or create content to solve problems. So when we search content, like say for when you're having stomach pain, probably you're searching the home remedies of stomach pain, right? So you're having a problem, you'd like to solve it. Okay, then you'd like to travel to Penang to Kuala Lumpur, right? And then you're searching, is interested traveling is allowed? You're having a problem that is lead you to a solution. And that's why you're searching for a content. 
how to find a digital marketing course for free. Problem, looking for a solution, right? Who are the best cloud solution in right now in Malaysia? And then you find exabytes, right? So you see, you're having a problem. And to solve that problem, we are looking for the content. Okay, so when you are creating content in social media, and when you have that thought that I'm gonna create a content to solve my consumer's problem, then you're right on the track. But yes, we can see not 100% contents are making towards that, you know, ideas or thoughts because we have seen a lot of content people are creating probably which is not probably solving your problem. And most of the times what I see from my last six, seven years of experience, when you're creating a content and directly or indirectly, if it's not solving a problem, then that content doesn't sustain in the long run. Even if you're creating the entertaining content, now you can probably argue, Norit, um, what if like entertaining content, entertaining content we consume to get entertainment. Yes, we are getting, we are consuming that content to get entertainment, but we pick a lot of things from that content. That means, you know, when we are watching a song, we pick the fashion, right? How the, you know, the singer is dressed up, what kind of uh, glasses they're wearing, what kind of haircuts they're having. So it's kind of indirectly giving you a solution. And if you see the big celebrities, whenever they're coming up with the new music videos, new movies, they try to give you something new in terms of style, in terms of message, in terms of communication. So certainly even the entertaining contents are solving your problem. Okay. So the first thing, and today is the most important thing, the, the key learning of today from now on, whenever we're going to create content, we would create the content to solve the consumer's problem. It is more relatable when you are owning a business and when you're creating the content for the business, but when you are probably creating the content for like personal branding and other, uh, for other reason, probably it will not relate that much that effectively, but there should be direct or indirect message of like solving the problem of your consumer or of the viewer. So it doesn't matter, you create um, social media post, video, podcast, it applicables in everywhere. Like why today Exabytes is creating this event? To solve the problem. People have a lot of queries regarding digital, regarding social media, regarding technology, and that's why they are here to solve that problem. And it's also kind of like a content, right? Great. So what is content marketing? So we understand what is content. So anything we create, audio, video, email, article, everything is content. Because I used to think that, okay, whenever we write an article or whenever we write caption, probably that is content. But content is everything. You make the video, that is content. You make the script of the video, that is also content. Okay, you make 20 second stories in reels, that's a content, everything is content, right? Okay, now what is content marketing? What do you understand when I say content marketing? I'm pretty sure you guys have heard the term thousands of times, you guys have used it, but when it comes about understanding, I'm just curious to know, when we said content marketing, what do you understand? Anyone wants to make it right? You just write in very shortly, you don't have to write, you know, the content marketing is, I don't, I don't need to know the definition. <clears throat> Amanda, that's great. Solving customer pain points. That's great, Amanda. That's absolutely right. Okay, Amanda has given a way better answer than what I was actually about to explain you. So to me, it's very simple. You know, a lot of people comes up with really um, strong definition to me. Marketing is a process to reach your consumer, right? And content marketing is when you're reaching your consumer by creating the content, that is content marketing. It can be applicable in social media marketing. It can be applicable in your video marketing. It can be applicable in everywhere. Okay. So when we are creating the content to reach our customers, the process is called content marketing. Okay. So guys, from today, remember content is anything. We create content to solve the problem. And content marketing is the process of reaching your consumer by creating the content. Okay, let's take a look to the next slide. This slide is pretty interesting. I take the examples from like different places. So 
I take the exams, examples from email marketing, social media posting, video posting, advertisement, article, and also a pop-up advertisement. So if you take a look, uh, you know, these examples, I'm gonna explain you guys later, more explaining later part, but now I have given you the examples just to get more ideas. I want you guys to see those examples properly. So you know, the next slides, what I'm gonna explain, that will make more sense to you. Okay, if you take a look, there's an EDM I got from Grammarly and I take the screenshot. And the first thing you can see, they have written 40% off to the annual premium plans, right? And then you can see there's a social media post. I think this girl is pretty popular. I like his content a lot. Uh, her name is Alex uh, Captoni. So if you're someone who are really out of the ideas, what kind of content you should create, or if you'd like to improve your copywriting, she is one of the person you probably consider to take a look. Okay, so if you take a look to the her, her content, what she has written, ever wonder what types of assets you should include in your portfolio to wow your potential clients? Okay. We read this, we read this. Now we're going to read this one as well. The third one, if you're exercising more than 30 minutes a week, you're likely wasting precious time, energy, and potential, potentially destroying your muscle growth. And the last one, want to ignite your business with creativity is a good copy. So if I ask you guys, what is the similarity you guys find? The first line we have read for like each and every social media post or the EDM or from the video posting. This is a video posting. This is a very nice video. I couldn't take the full video. I just took the screenshot. Uh, question based though, no. think a little bit different. I mean, not different. Just think, what do you see? There's a very common similarity we, we find in here. <clears throat> First one is 40% annual premium pricing. The second one, yes, that was asking a question. Okay, Nico said issue and solution. Ro uh, Sir Bini, curious. Okay, Munchi, that's absolutely right. That's what I was looking for, the hook caption. They hook, they draw your attention. So say for when you're getting 10% uh, discount, you'll not bother 20%, you'll get a little excited. From 30% to more, it will make you more exciting, right? So they have given 40% discount, definitely it's kind of a hook. The hook can comes in a different way. It can come with the offer, it can come with the shocking statement, it can come with, you know, telling you something interesting or a proper data. But if you see the, the only relation between all this posting is they use a hook. The first one, it is playing the hook with a discount. The second one, if you're someone who are dealing with the customer on a daily basis, I'm telling you that will draw your attention. And this one also, you know, if you see like, oh my God, if you're exercising more than 30 minutes in a week, you're potentially wasting your physics, right? It is affecting your energy and destroying your muscle. That will make you scared. And the last one, want to ignite your business with a crazy good copy, the similarities they all start with something that is hard to deny and let me ask you guys a question if you saw an advertisement and if you read the first line and if it doesn't excite you will you read the rest of the advertisement if yes type three if no type five yes the answer is no <clears throat> so we have a very small part in social media. So our first line should be the best line. Whenever you're creating the content, you're writing a content, your thumbnail should be great. So if you see, there's a great example of like thumbnail. Yeah, this one looks a little bit more amateur and that's the purpose because Mind Valley don't, I mean, they use some great thumbnails, but in some video, they just make it look a little bit of, uh, you know, raw. So people actually find it exciting. So the first thing, the first should the first line should be your best line. So whatever you written, if your first line is not good enough, your clients or your consumers are not going to engage with your post. And to do that, you need to come up with the best hook. So your first line should be your best hook. All right. Now take a look at the example of like article. You might say like, Norit, 
I got it, but it is only applicable for the social media posting and only applicable for the videos. It doesn't go with the article. Now let me show you the example of like one article. This is has been posted on entrepreneur.com. And you all know entrepreneur.com is one of the leading portal, uh, you know, to share the content uh, by different, different industry leaders. So if we read the first two lines of this article, the first two lines is, five people approached me last month to write about them in the news. Four of them wanted to pay me for it, which is guaranteed way to ruin your writing career. So this first two line, if you read it, I'm telling you, you're going to read the rest of the article as well. Because why you're going to read the rest of the articles? It is about five people approach you to write something as a, you know, like as a content writer. And you say like four of them wanted to pay you for that. And if you get paid, it is going to ruin your career. And I'm telling you, if you're a copywriter, if you're an article producer, you will be damn interested to read the rest of the articles. So you see, again, the first line is actually making the difference. <clears throat> Even it is applicable for your pop-up advertisement. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with Hootsuite. Hoot, what is Hootsuite? Hootsuite is one of the leading social media management platforms. So when you go to their website, our ads will pop up. And if you see the first line, well, this is awkward. And if you see the picture they have used, so the visual and caption is actually talking to each other, right? So when you read the first line, I'm telling you, you will read the rest of the advertisement as well. And I picked this advertisement because I actually read the rest of the advertisement by seeing the first line. So the first thing, what we have identified the who, okay. Just I'm giving you 30 seconds, just try to you know, scan the content because I'm gonna explain the four steps of making a great content and if you take a look specifically to this content and this content, that will give you guys an idea, my explanation, and it will make more sense to you guys. So just giving you 30 seconds to just take a look. Okay, I think you guys uh, read it. I'm moving to the slides. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you the four steps, the simple four steps that's what you can implement to create any kind of content. You want, to, you want to create article, you want to create infographic, you want to create social media post. You can apply these four steps to any content. And from my six years of experience, I'm telling you, I find it pretty fascinating. Yes, it can, cannot be applicable in 100% places, but I can bet it can be applicable in 90% places, in 90% contents. Uh, regardless of content type. Okay, so what is this? Let's take a look. So I actually divided it into a marketing funnel. Do you guys heard about IDA? If you have heard about IDA type three, good to know that some of you actually knows about IDA. So IDA is one of the oldest marketing models that is attention, interest, desire, and action. Um, so you know, like uh, when it's been introduced, we have found that most of the successful case study marketing campaign actually has going through this process. But yes, now this is not that applicable because right now we are living in 2021 where the life is pretty fast and we are having the fast paced companies to grow. Uh, so now it is a little bit of change. A lot of people actually make like AIA, that means attention, interest and action. Some people make it uh, hot lead, cold lead and warm lead, something like that. Uh, but whatever is the case, uh, I divided my content marketing strategy in four steps. So what is the first step? The first step, what we have discussed, you need to start with the who or the shocking statement or a problem. Because, you know, in 2021, the world we are living, we're living in a very disruptive world. So say for a still got a message. And then when a still is about to reply this message to Norit, and then suddenly I still got another notification from Nicole. Uh, and then she just clicked because Nicole is her good friend. And when she's about to texting Nicole and then Lauren also texts in the WhatsApp. And you know, then probably at the end of the day, she texts only Lauren and then she forget to reply Norit and Nicole as well. So now 
how many of you are facing this situation? It is happening with me a lot. I'm about to reply something in WhatsApp and then suddenly my Facebook pops up. I see the notification and then I got another message in Instagram. I reply to Instagram and then I forget about WhatsApp. If you're someone who's facing the same struggle like me, type five, I know I'm not alone. So, you know, in this disruptive world, in this disruptive world, I think the attention is the goal. If anyone is giving you the attention, that is like a goal and you should utilize it. And to get that attention, you need to start with the hook. So, you know, you can tell me, Narit, the hook is not applicable for my business. You tell me a business or industry name, I can probably give an example. Like say for, if I'm selling digital marketing course and um, I'm giving the digital marketing training and that's the course I want to sell in online, so what should be my hook? Uh, let me think. So probably I'll say like, do you know in the last one year, 60% um, Malaysians actually uh, enrolled for digital marketing skills or had the digital marketing skills. So if you see, I said 60% Malaysians actually got digital marketing skills. Or do you know uh, digital marketing skills help 60% Malaysian to get a better career? in 2021. So you see that kind of hook, if you're someone who are looking for new skill and you're being confused between the graphic design and the website development and digital marketing, if you see that hook, definitely you're gonna read further. So the first thing, you need to start with the hook. The second thing, you need to open the loop a little bit because once you got the attention, definitely you need to hold it for a little bit longer period of time. Because if your next paragraph is not making them excited, you might lose your customer. So opening up the loop is really important. So what is the example of opening, opening up the loop? Uh, let me show you. <clears throat> so this is one of the example um, from the Alex Cathione. Uh, so the first line, you see, just read it carefully. Want to ignite your business with crazy good copy? Hook. Now let's see how she opening up the loop. Learn how to write a high converting sales page with my simple and proven 16 steps formula, even if you don't consider yourself a copywriter. So first of all, if you're someone who would like to have the growth of the business, probably you will get interested about it. If you're looking for a good copy, you might be interested about it. But say for, if you're someone who got hooked and you want to find a reason to get engaged with the advertisement, and I'm telling you, this opening up loop will play a vital role. How it will play a vital role? Because if you read it very carefully, what she mentioned, learn how to write high converting sales page with my simple and proven 16 steps formula. So what she focused, simple and proven. So that means the 16 steps formula, whatever she is going to share with you, that is proven. Industry already practicing it, right? And most important is very simple. And the last line where she actually nailed it, she said, even if you don't consider yourself a copywriter. So yes, my main objective is the copywriter. But even if you're not a copywriter, if you're a digital marketer, if you're a performance marketer, if you're, if you're a person who's running advertisement, then you should see it. Because you know, not a lot of companies having the uh, situation, having the situation to hire multiple people for like different, different roles. They probably hire one person who can run ads, write the copy and do the operation. And this is where it is going to play a vital role. So you see, she has opened the loop and she said, hey, it's not only for the copywriter, it's not only for the business owner, it's for anyone who have slight interest about copywriting. So this is a great example of like how she opening up the loop. Okay, so say for in my case, if I'd like to show for digital, marketing what should be the loop my loop should be um i'm going to tell like learn digital marketing from uh 10 years experience industry expert uh who have trained 10,000 people in last one year so you see um i i focus on the capabilities of the speakers the experience and then also i told them how many people probably that speaker have trained in last one year so that's how you can opening up the loop. Okay, then what is the next part? 
The next part is mention the possible benefits and how it can make an impact in your life or your business. Okay, I would like to ask you guys a question. Did you guys saw Squid Games? If whoever saw Squid Games type seven. <clears throat> so Squid Games actually give a great example of creating desire part. So do you guys remember after the first game? So after the first game, uh, um, you know, like the people who got eliminated, they got shot. And definitely when someone got shot just beside you, it will make you stress. It will make you scared, right? And this is, this is what is happening. Don't worry, I'm not giving you the whole spoiler. I'm, I'm not giving the whole spoiler. I'm just giving you a little bit of it because this is a great example. I'm telling you, that's a fantastic example you can probably uh, utilize in marketing. So, you know, after that, people got scared and, and then they say like, they feel like, oh, I don't want to play this game. Yeah, even though I have signed, I don't want to play this game. And then they request to stop the game. And according to the rules, if the major said, we don't want to play the game, you have to stop the game. And uh, the players will be back again into their normal life. And then the organizer said, oh, you want to stop the game? Yeah, if the major said they want to stop the game, we will stop the game. Uh, we will take a vote. But before we take a vote, we would like to show you the prize and then you guys remember uh, there is a ball comes in on the top and it is filling up with the money the piggy bank do you guys remember so they show them the piggy bank with all the money right and then <clears throat> after that before they show the piggy bank it was 100 percent wants to leave the game after show the piggy bank what happened tell me <clears throat> So after they saw the piggy bank, what happened? Do you guys remember? 50% got confused. They changed their mind. They said, oh, you know, okay, wh whoever have died has died. And I go through a stress. I go through uh, this process. I already played the first game. I don't want to leave. And suddenly it becomes 50-50. So what I'm trying to say, you know, guys, sometimes when we are dealing with people, rather than you tell them what to do, because, you know, as a human, or as a consumer, we don't like to get dictated by anyone. Why we hate the, the sales agent? I'm, I'm being very sorry. I was working in the sales for like three years of my life and I was pretty successful. But my realization, people hate salespeople, right? And the reason people hate salespeople because they already feel pressure from the salespeople, right? So in my career, when I worked in my uh, sales life, you know, I never push people, I make very good friendship with every people and I go to coffee and you know, like I talked about the project I'm doing. It's like, you know, chit chatting with a friend. Hey, you know, we're doing this project and it is getting really excited. I'm, I'm thinking of like doing this, this, this to make this project exciting. And trust me, out of 10, six of my clients said, oh, not it. it sounds really great. Let me know if there's an opportunity, if we can work together in here. So you see, so most of the times, we felt pressure because we we don't hate salespeople. One thing I would like to clear, we are not hating salespeople. We just don't feel comfortable when they push us. So one of the example, I, I went to Asunta Hospital and uh, you know, like uh, uh, it was not a very great moment, but still I'm looking for insurance and I find a guy and I say like, hey, uh, I'd like to get the insurance. Can I have your number? And then he gave me the card and I also gave him my number and then from that afternoon to night, she texted me three times and she said, oh, you know, this offer is only valid for today. If you don't get it, you'll, you'll be not able to get it on tomorrow. And I told her first time that, you know, today is not a good day. I'm having a lot of mental stress and uh, my relatives are not feeling okay, they're sick. So probably I can talk to you on Monday. That means after two days, but she gets crazy. She, she was texting me like, and keep telling me, <clears throat> the offer is really, uh, you know, irresistible. So the offer is really irresistible, but you need to understand the situation. So I think because of few people, we actually hate that. But the great example, what I was talking about um, from the Squid Games, if they say like, no, you have to play, then everyone will get furious. But they just show you, they tease you. And then they said, oh, okay, now you don't want to play game. Okay, let's go. And then, 
suddenly 51% got the more vote. They don't want to play the game. And 50 and 49% people said they want to play game and they canceled the game. And that 49% people was furious. They were like crazy. And you know, that's the human behavior. When we are in a competition, they feel like, you know, if you die, you die. I don't care. If I get the money, somehow if I survive, I'll get the money and that will uh, make an impact into my life. So this is, you know, the surviving mode in, in humans' brain. Okay, that's the surviving mode in humans' brain. And that's what we need to implement. We need to take benefits when we are doing the marketing. So we need to create the desire by showing them how it is making an impact into their life. So one of the example, like say for, <clears throat> you have used Exabyte solution, cloud solution, website making solution, digital marketing solution. So if the, if Exabytes have a proof, like, okay, from X company start from scratch level and they use Exabytes and then they're one of the top startup in Malaysia, I'm telling you that probably make more impact rather than if Exabytes is saying, we're the best, we are doing this, we're doing that. Because people see the impact. People don't see how good you are. I'm telling you, no one gives a damn about, are you the number one company or are you the number two company? Where you went for the travel, how well your company is doing, people don't give a shit about it. People give a shit when they see your solution can make an impact into their life. So again, the example of like digital marketing, so if I say in last one year, out of this 10,000 people, 3,000 people have gotten the job and they are being part of the companies like Dell, Mind Valley, Google, Facebook, Exabytes, uh, Jua, IQI, and some big names. So what do you think? If you see that, I'm telling you, your respect towards that trainer will be increased. That means that person is really a gym. Yes, because we know not 100% people will get successful because we graduated from the same university and not everyone get a better job. So by having that thoughts in our mind, we understand that, okay, that means that trainer is probably capable, that company is probably capable of making an impact. Okay, so how we create the desire? We create the desire by showing some impact in your life or your business. By the way, you can create the impact by playing with the price as well. So sometimes we see the Samsung, probably Samsung notice price like 5,000, they suddenly drop it to 3,500, you know? That's also kind of creating huge, huge desire in your mind. So we can create desire in a different way, but we need to make sure we need to create desire. So if I show you one more time the uh, post of Katiani, so what she have written, I'm Alex Katiani, founder of blah, blah, blah. Uh, over the last decade, I've helped dozens of entrepreneurs and brands ignite their business with words that sell, you know? That is creating desire. And now, I'm teaching my best techniques, tips, and templates in my upcoming five days, uh, right in Ignite Challenge. So you see, she put the desire a little bit of different form. So the first thing, we will hook people and get their attention. We'll opening up the loop, we'll give them a little bit of teaser to make and create them interested. And then by showing the examples by showing the impact by putting up the great discount or offer we are going to create the desire and the last thing is the action so say for you like a product and uh, whatever you see you loved it what is the next thing you'd like to do anyone so if you like an advertisement you like a product what is the next thing that comes in your mind if you like a product by seeing the advertisement Anyone can tell me? So for my case, if I like a product, if I like an advertisement, I want to know from where I would like to buy. Is it available in online? Is it available in offline, right? So if it's online, which is the website? If it's offline, where is the store? So that's why the CTA is playing a vital role. You know, a lot of people, actually most of us taking the CTA very likely, but I'm telling you one simple example, how CTA can transform your business. So when I first joined GUI IQI, we used to write a lot of article and the KPI was for the article writer was two article per week. 
and they used to write the article. And uh, I'm not an article writer, as I was the head of the department. So my boss was asking me, okay, now we produced eight articles in this month, what we got? And I said, like, I know we got uh, X amount of visitor, X amount of, um, you know, like uh, page visit. Uh, this is the average duration time, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, but, you know, like I, I, I can feel that he's not satisfied because yes, we got 10,000 page views, but what next? And do we know who are those 10,000 page views and does they make an impact into my business? And then I was thinking, how can I, you know, make it look better? And then a small idea, I've changed everything. And then I feel like I can add, because I was seeing in, uh, uh, I, I was reading an article, I think in Forbes or somewhere, and they have added a CTA. Like, oh, are, if you're interested, click here to fill up the form. And then I feel like, whoa, can we add a form under our article? And we added a form. First few months, we got only one or two random <clears throat> signups. But after four months, now, and from four months until now, we are getting at least from eight articles, we are getting at least 60 to 70 signups. So now if I ask you guys, if someone is reading your article, <clears throat> reading your 300, 500, 700 words article, and if they sign up, what do you think? Are they interested about your product or not? Or probably they have <clears throat> read your five lines Facebook advertisement, <clears throat> and then you have added a Google form. Do you think, or you know, if they click that advertisement, it open up a Facebook sign up form, or probably bring them to a landing page? Do you think do they interested about your product or not? That means they are dead interested <clears throat> because the person who have read it for like fifteen minutes, ten minutes, five minutes, I'm telling you, he's signing up because he's dead serious. And that's how we see our articles start being a small value. And we know what, what to focus in terms of showing the statistics. Okay. It is applicable for Facebook ads. It is applicable for podcast. It is applicable for any content you're making. If there is no CTA, if people are not taking action, then it is kind of like worthless. Yes, unless it is a campaign you're running for the top of the funnel. That means you're running a campaign to reach more audience and on the second funnel, you're going to run another conversion ad. If that campaign is a part of the first funnel, then it, it can be a little bit of, uh, okay, if you don't get any signups. But when you're running it for the second funnel or the third funnel, then it's a different story. I'm pretty sure you guys know about the funneling when you're doing the Facebook marketing and the Facebook advertisement. Um, if you don't know, probably again, you guys can ask me later because this is not the right place to talk about it. But uh, if you're not following the funneling in Facebook advertisement, if you're not doing the remarketing, 80% uh, chance your Facebook ad will not be effective the way you're working. Okay. So the last point and the most important point, you need to add a CTA. There should be a call to action button. If you don't have a call to action button, you might lose a lot of potential consumers. So guys, remember anything you want to create, any content in your social media or even for your blog, your website, your hook, you're opening up the loop, you're creating desire and CTA is the key to success of any content in social media. If you guys have understand these four steps, please type five so I know I can move to the next slide peacefully. Great. So now, <clears throat> this is almost like the last slide um, from my last six years of experience. I think these four types of content is playing a vital role. Uh, in social media or in digital marketing. What is this four types of content? Because you know, you can say like, now I understand the flow of the content, the structure of the content, but what type of content I should create. So the first and the most important, you should create the entertaining content. So 70% people who are consuming digital marketing and social media content, they prefer to watch entertaining content. Okay, so, and this is one of the biggest reason the reel and TikTok is getting more popular. Okay, yes. Um, you know, as I said, people like other types of content, but when it's entertaining content, they actually uh, engage with that content more effectively. Okay, and uh, that's why we see whenever there's a trend comes in, 
the brands are getting crazy to follow that trend. Okay, so when I say entertaining content, that doesn't have to be um, funny or weird dance. Uh, it can be a lot of things. So, so what I mean by entertaining content, so when it's entertaining content, it can be memes. Okay, and that memes can be related with your business, your product or service. Um, it can be fun facts. So say for um, Exabytes is selling probably website development, then they can come up with a weekly fun facts. Do you know 70% of the business in Malaysia don't have a website? But it is great to have a website if you're having a business, something like this. So, you know, like putting up some fun facts that is give you some thoughts. And after a certain time, you can relate, oh, this kind of suggestion is coming from exabytes. Or it can be puzzle, you know. Um, probably you, you see there's a content like, there's a brand name and it's like moving and then you tap, it got stuck. If it got stuck in the right place, probably you win some gift hampers, right? So puzzles can be one of the content and then behind the scenes. So say for uh, Exabytes have produced this amazing um, event and then probably behind the scenes, there's probably a lot of funny things happen between Nicole and Lauren and uh, you know all the team members and they can make a small, small space and they can upload it to the social media. And I'm telling you people are actually more interested to see the behind the content. It's one of the great example. If you go to YouTube, I think now it's flooded the behind the scene content of Squid Games, right? In your YouTube, in your Instagram, because Squid Games is having the attention of the people. Now, whatever you're related, you make related with Squid Games, that will get the, get the attention as well. So entertaining content, yeah, BDS, right, BDS. So entertaining content is something you should consider to create for your company. So one more example, you know, we run a campaign to hire sales agent, you know, for UI, IQI. And uh, our target was, our target was uh, the youth, the youth age bracket between 20 to uh, 30. And we have done a research and we find that in Malaysia, this age bracket having a lot of interest about K-pop and BTS. BTS is a Korean pop band, right? And then what we did, we took a Korean pop song and all the team members danced with that song. So, you know, like if you see the content, it is really engaging. I'm going to share the content uh, link later on because suddenly it comes in my mind. That's why I didn't put it into my content. And, uh, you know, all the staffs of Joy IQ have danced with Momoland, Bam, there's a song called Bam, and we all danced with it. And, you know, if you, I, I, I can bet you haven't seen a content like this, that we are recruiting agents, but we are dancing with a song because the video is drawing your attention. But the message is, you'd like to enjoy your life while you're working, you know, sign up and join us. So what the message we'd like to give to these people, the age bracket to 20 to 30, because what they're thinking, they want freedom. They want to enjoy their life. They want, they don't want to get dictated by you. They want, you know, comfortability. And by showing that video, we'd like to show them, hey, you see, as a company, we're being very flexible. We all dance together. Doesn't matter if you're 60 years old or you're 20 years old. We have the fun together. And we, the most importantly, we understand K-pop. We understand Korean dramas. That means if you come us, you have a lot of things to talk. You're not going to have a boring job like. So that's what one of the biggest examples I think we have created the entertaining content. And that was one of the biggest hit campaign we had in 2018. The second one is the educational content. I think pretty much you all know what is the educational content. But when it comes about educational content, you take it very seriously. But I'm telling you, everything can be educational content. How to make green tea latte? If you know that, it can be an educational content. I'm telling you, I'm the one who searched how to make green tea latte like several times in YouTube. So sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, I know how to do makeup. It is a good content. Yes, it is a good content. I know how to take good lipstick. It is a good content. You know, I know how to, you know, identify a good bicycle. That's a good content because a lot of people are searching that content. So whenever you're giving an information that is empowering people, that can be an educational content. And if you take a look, the most search terms in YouTube is how to, that is how to do this, how to do that. Encouraging content, I'm pretty sure you guys know what is encouraging content. 
the content we see, see from Simon Sinek, we see from Gary V, uh, we see from all the influencers that is encouraging content. But again, encouraging content can be, can be different. So if you see Lauren is posting a picture and she make a post that she has done the MC of an event, that's also an encouraging content because by seeing her, I had a dream to be an MC and by seeing her, I start believing that I can do that as well because you know, Lauren was just my friend. So if Lauren can do that, that is encouraging me to do something as well. So, you know, we always feel like encouraging content can be only come from Gary V, only come from Simon Sinning, but no, it can come from Norris, it can come from Larry, it can come from Celeste, it can come from anyone. The last one is the important one, what is emotional content? And that is, um, I think you all understand, like one of the content we make at the last pandemic, uh, last year pandemic uh, about the Mother's Day. So we have few people who cannot travel and haven't seen their mom for like two to three years. And we try to capture the emotion very well. So we said, you're going to call your mom in the loudspeaker and say like, mom, happy Mother's Day and I love you. And you know, out of four, three mom actually cried immediately. And we are very lucky and fortunate to, to hold that raw emotion. And we make that video. And I'm telling you that makes a huge difference. Sometimes the emotional content don't have to bring you the cells immediately, but it will make a longer impact. So do you guys remember the Raya, uh, Raya campaign by Petronas? Every year they do it. Who can relate? Uh, who can remember it? the Raya campaign from Petronas? If you are relating, if you can remember it, type two. Everyone can do that. I'm telling you, those who have even live in Malaysia for like six months, they can even see the Petronas campaign. This is very emotional. So, you know, that is not telling you to buy oil or not educating you about the oil and gas industry, but it is making a long-term impact. So whenever we think of Raya campaign, the brand comes in my mind, it is Petronas. And I can tell you two advertisements in detail, every bit of it from the Petronas. So you see, the emotional content is playing a vital role. Okay, and the last one and the fifth one, when we can combine the entertaining content and educational content, that becomes a deadly combo. And one of the example is TikTok we see. So say for, you know, we always feel like in TikTok, we probably have to do the stupid dance. No, it is very powerful marketing platform. And the next session is about TikTok, I know. So say for you say like in Reels, you say like how to be a digital marketer, show like this and the text box in. And then number one, number two, number three, boom. I'm telling you, your content will get a lot of attention. So guys, I think remember these four steps and this four E, and I'm telling you that will play a vital role in terms of creating your content. Have those thoughts and try to implement in your business. And I'm telling you, you can see a huge impact in the long run. So I think that's all from me. Um, that's all from me. Uh, so we covered the four E, we covered the four steps, and we also discussed about how to structure any kinds of content. So that's all from me. And I think now we can uh, open up ourselves for Q&A. But yeah, if you guys have any question, uh, you guys can get in touch with me in LinkedIn uh, or in my any social media platform. I think now, Lauren, it's over to you. All right, super cool. I actually enjoyed your presentation. I was listening throughout the whole time. So we have a whole bunch of questions that came in. I think we can address that. So yes. let's go with this one from Atia. So Atia's question, uh, it's actually a two-part question. She asks, how can you tell when a content is overdone and has become one of those clickbait type of content? And the okay. second question is, what are the go-to tips for making content that can increase engagement? Okay, Atia, first of all, you know, you create content, you know, like when I post something in LinkedIn, I don't care, do, do I get 500 likes or 50 likes? All I care about, do I get any business inquiries or not? So if I get five likes and I get three business inquiries, I'm super cool, I'm super happy. So, you know, yes, you're overdosing the content probably irritates some people. That means they're not your target consumer. But if you love Sephora, if Sephora push you 20 contents, I'm telling you, you're not going to leave Sephora because you have a very strong bonding about Sephora, right? So, uh, I think, you know, like if you're making three posts in a day, you're not overdosing. Yes, if you're making 50 posts in a day, probably yes, you're overdosing. And I'm pretty sure you're not doing 50 posts in a day. So if someone is making you stress uh, by telling you're doing the overdosing your post, uh, it's, it's just like 
uh, he's not your target consumer and don't bother about it. Okay, and then second thing is clickbait. You know, the clickbait is actually a negative thing. So when you say something and I click your content and I didn't find it, that's what is clickbait. Okay, but when you write a nice caption and a uh, very teasing headline and I click and I get it, that is not a clickbait. That is an example of like a great content. So um, you need to focus on writing good content and don't focus on being the clickbait because you're not doing something negative, right? The second question, what are the go-to tips for making content that can increase, con increase engagement? Atiya, focus on solving problem. Before you create any content, ask yourself, am I solving a problem? If it is directly or indirectly, you're on it. I'm telling you, doesn't matter you got one like or 100 likes, don't chase likes. See, chase the excellence, you know? Uh, as I told you, someone can get 3 million views today, tomorrow he might get five views. And that's what is happening most of the cases, right? Okay, so um, just to add on to our question now, I understand that you actually uh, told us the difference between clickbait and being spammy. So um, three posts a day, or you know, for example, use Sephora as an example, three posts a day is not entirely spammy, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, you know, Lauren, it is not absolutely spammy. I love to see three posts in a day from anyone, from any business. I don't mind. Unless, you know, that that is a stupid content and that is not <laughs> adding a value, yeah. Yeah, because I think like a lot of us, you know, who are have small businesses, for example, we're afraid to post more than once a day. So, you know, because we, we are afraid of just, you know, sneaking in our ways into people's lives, like just too much. We don't want to irritate people, but it's good yeah. to know because coming to think about it, like now, like now that you mentioned Sephora, there are, there are the brands and there are other influencers who do this as well. And we don't entirely get irritated when we see it. But, you know, as I said, probably you know, we are not the target customer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're not the target customer. To me, uh, uh, I think we are focused too much on what people are judging. You know, like if if you're thinking too much on people are thinking, it's better let people think. And you know, like let do my job. And I think if you see if it's not happening within, you know, it, it's make a negative impact after you do it for a month or two months, you lose your followers. People are bashing you. Then you understand there's something wrong, right? But I don't think it's it's it's, it's a bad practice. To me, I'm absolutely on it. I think that's very, very good advice. Thank you so much for answering that question. Okay, so this one is from Karen. Karen's question is, how frequently should we post to social media with the same topic or different topic? Now, we just mentioned it about, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Karen, it depends on who you are. If you're a business, then definitely you should have a core theme. Your core theme will probably cover 60% of your content and the uh, rest of the 40% probably will cover by ad hoc or your different focus as well. Uh, but if it's a personal branding, then you should focus only one thing, you know, uh, like I'm a digital marketer. I always talk about digital marketing. That doesn't mean I don't know about sales. I don't know about leadership. I know about it, but I don't want to promote myself rather than anything apart from digital marketing specialist. So probably people, when people can see me, they can relate me. Knowledge is equal to digital marketing. And that's the thing I'm doing for the like last four years. I'm not talking about leadership. I'm not talking about sales. I'm not talking about, you know, any tips or tricks. Uh, so that's how I feel like can be more effective in personal branding. But when it's a brand, that's a different thing. And how frequent, uh, if you're doing for personal branding, I think one post in a week should be the minimum. That's a minimum, uh, maximum as many as you, you love to do. Uh, I'd love to see more from you. Uh, but yeah, uh, if it's for brand, I think three posts in a day is fine. If you cannot do okay. three posts, one post in a day is absolutely needed. Okay, that's good because we need to remind people, you know, that we're there as brands. But like I said, I, just judging from the questions that we're getting, people are actually a little bit afraid to overpost. But I think with whatever you've just said, I think they'll have a bit more confidence to move forward with this. Yeah, I mean, you know, like Lauren, that's the experience we got by working for like last few years because I work in different industries. So yeah, that pretty works for me. Yeah, that's good. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I think we'll skip Karen's question. We'll come back to this if we have time because we have questions from other people as well. Let's move on to Rachel's question. We'll come back to uh, Karen in just a bit. So Rachel's question is, hi, could we make testimonials as the content? What are the suitable ways to display, uh, display it in our own website and social media platforms? Thank you. Rachel, of course, Rachel. You know, like say for if I work with Lauren, as, as a human being, human being are nice, you know? And if I have done a project with Lauren, if I said, Lauren, can you give me a 20 seconds video? What, is, what was your experience working with me? And I'm telling you, 
out of 10 times, she would probably give it to eight times. And it's applicable for all of us because as a human being, we're nice. And I think as a business, you definitely should create that kind of content because, you know, uh, I make a content and I just take small clips of my different, different students. And they just say like how they find the experience having the training with me. And that video really helps me a lot to create new business revenue as well. Uh, before that, it's not like I was not getting any inquiries, but that actually just, you know, giving me the extra boost. People actually like to hear from the people when uh, Norid is going to tell you, oh, the chicken fry into that restaurant is good. You're going to believe me more rather than you see it on that advertisement. So it is effective. And the best way is just make a video, uh, just edit it nicely with the minimum edit skill and just post it and make sure when you, it's, if it's more than 15 seconds video, you added the, uh, what it's called, transcript, uh, you know, the, the subtitle with the video. All right, thank you. So this, is, this next one is from Cindy. Cindy's question is, um, how do we prevent making content that might be sensitive for some people, but can be also engaging for a huge amount of people at the same time? So Cindy, it is very hard to answer because uh, there's a different types of marketer we have in this industry. So I'm that kind of a person. I don't want to do something that can hurt people. But you know, a lot of companies actually want to do that kind of content because that will give them the immediate attention. So it is actually very much variable, but how you will understand it's a sensitive content or not, you need to make a post probably to identify it. Uh, without that, the best way you can probably talk among your team with the different people, how they, how they think, um, and uh, you can just take an action. So, you know, there's no right or uh, wrong answer for this one, but as a marketer, I, I don't like to make a content that can be sensitive for anyone. Yeah, I try to avoid that kind of content. Okay, I think we have time for another one to two questions. So let's take uh, this one right at the bottom by uh, Boon Yong. So the question is, how about creating a series of three teaser ads to create suspense of the brand or new product launch? Could we have your comments, please? How oh, about creating a series of three teaser ads to create a suspense? Okay, Boon, I'm not sure exactly three or two, how it will make an impact, but to me, <clears throat> I'm giving you a very uh, good marketing advice. You need to make sure that the one or two video you have made, that's a very well-made video that's pretty engaging. Uh, and you know how you will understand when you post it to your social media, you can see the analytics. So if your video is like say for 21 seconds or 25 seconds, if you see after five seconds, it starts dropping. That means that means people are losing interest on the five seconds. So edit your video again after the five seconds. Put something exciting, so hold the interest a little bit of longer and um, then just promote it to people spend some money and then on the second funnel run a campaign for the conversion retargeting the people who have seen your videos i'm telling you most likely your campaign will be a successful campaign because if you have a good video like mcdonald's creates amazing videos you know five seconds ten seconds they just give you the right message they got a lot of engagement and then when they run the second funnel campaign it turned out as a gold campaign. So I think you can just see the example of McDonald's and you'll get an idea uh, what kind of video you should create. But it is actually solely your decision. You're going to make the teaser of like three, but I think three teaser is kind of too much for me. But again, it can depend on the business. I think better to have one or two teaser. It is good enough. Other people cannot re relate to you, you know? Because it can get a little bit liquidated if you have three, you know, there's always that chance you run that risk, uh, but that's good advice. So um, a little bit to add on to that, we have the next question uh, from Karen, this one, and uh, related to just now the question from Boon Yong, Karen's question is, how long should we expect to see the results to build branding awareness and attract traffic to our website with organic posting? Karen, it depends on your objective and your budget. So say for uh, as I said, when I first joined, we had only 1,500 traffic in our website and we set an aim that we need to reach 30,000 end of this first quarter. So, and then we run the advertisement and then we get an idea per click is around like 20 cents. So now you do the math. If your per click is 20 cents to get 30,000, how many, how much money you need to reach to the 30,000, right? Uh, so, uh, but I think usually if you're spending around 5,000 ringgit to 10,000 ringgit, or even 3,000 ringgit, I think it, it will take two months to create a proper awareness. If you're talking about the brand, if you're talking about a particular campaign, I think two weeks 
and spending thousand ringgit is good enough to create the awareness because as i said the second funnel campaign is the important the first funnel you spend 1000 ringgit you reach 50000 people and make sure on the second funnel you target this 50000 people who have engaged with you and create a custom audience and look like audience to find the people like them and i think you can see some great results Right. Now, I know we're running short of time, but I think this question is pretty important, even though we have covered it in the previous weeks. Um, so this one is from Karen as well. So Karen's question is, uh, very quickly, should we create a different account on social media to differentiate between business posting, content marketing, and personal passionate sharing content? That means uh, one for business uh, related things and the other with like, you know, personal interest and sharing. So I think basically Karen is running a small business here, if I'm correct. So what are your thoughts? Of course, for your business, you should have a different business page and the business social media pages. And for your personal brand, it should be different because, you know, probably you're selling nasi lemak, but you have interest about um, some different foods, right? So you can make the vlogs about the different foods, but you can still sell nasi lemak. And eventually people, one people will know about Karen because of she likes Western food, but still people will go back to her business and to find the nasty lemaks as well so i think it is it should have two account your personal brand is your personal brand and your uh, business is business you know uh, it it is better to have this uh, differentiation yeah I agree. I absolutely agree 100%. Um, Nari, I'm going to have to let you go right now, but we still have a couple of questions in the Q&A. So if you could please yeah. answer that at your own time, that'd be great. But for sure. now, to everyone who's watching, let's give it up for Norit for a wonderful, fantastic presentation. I love the fact that you covered you know, the IDA model and the before ease. And you gave us a lot of effective methods on how to work around some of the problems you might be facing. And all this comes from your own personal experience. So we thank you for giving us the little shortcuts in life today and for always being a part of the Exabytes family. It's it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, everyone. And good to know everyone enjoyed. Have a good day and stay safe. All right. Thanks, Lauren. I'll see you real soon, hopefully. Bye. Exobytes. Grow your business online.